Is it connected? Yes. I feel like maybe we did need the light ring. It seems a bit dull. Oh. Hello, hello. We're live. It's a shame you can't put like a, can you put like a title? You know, like this is what we're doing. Hmm. I okay. Think, I think you can pin a comment. Horrible at this. So let's. It's like you've got an actual audience while you're doing your video. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's weird. It's really strange. So now you do get. Do you want to do action? Like behind the curtain. Like action. Yes, please, if you would. Right, ready? If you wouldn't mind. Three, two, one. Action. Hi, guys. Um, today's video is going to be a Q&A about my book, the physical actual book. Hi. The book! The actual book! I have Emma here, who's um, very generously offered to be my moderator. We've got two Instagram Lives on the go and uh, some questions from Instagram the other day. So, we'll pause due to poor connection. That's not a surprise. Oh, <laughs> mine's still um, going. So well, this head was, over to my this Instagram. Is, oh, no, you're back. You're this back, was back. part of the reason that we were doing it because my internet is so poor. Um, I really wanted to do an Insta Live, I wanted to do a YouTube Live, it doesn't work very well, my internet's not very good, so I thought we'd do it this way. So we've got lots of questions, I understand a lot of the questions because I've had a lot of them frequently, um, and number one, without even looking at this, is is it just for mums? No, so, I can no. answer that for you. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not, I've read it. <laughs> yes, Emma has read them. <laughs> and I'm not um, a mum, but it's not yeah. for mums. No, I would say that it is definitely aimed at an older audience, mm. I'd say like 25 plus, 30 plus. I'd say that's fair. You need to have kind of had enough time to... Um, I think by the time I was 25, I don't even know if I was at that point being like, what is my style? I think I was just still buying stuff. At where, you yeah, know. I think things change. Even if I think back to when I was 25, which was a little while ago, quite a while ago. My, my, that long. <laughs> yeah, but even so, my style has changed from then. Yes. So it's about... Well, that's another thing. It's an evolution. So the whole point of the book being called Life Styling, because that was another question I had, was whether or not I chose the title, which I did. Um, and I didn't, it was, there were so many different things that came up while we were, while we were, it's because you're here, while we were writing while the book. Writing, I had no okay, part in it. While I was writing the book, lots of things <laughs> came up that um, were kind of battles. And um, the, weirdly, that was not one of them. I suggested the title, Life Styling. They wanted something about mom, posh mums because it's an American publisher. And posh mums? Like, what? how could you have titled that? I can't remember what it was, but it was... <laughs> I literally saw the title and was like, mm, no, absolutely not. It's a different... The word doesn't mean the same thing in America. Oh, like a lot of things. Yeah, it's they. it does not have the negative connota connotations in America. <laughs> Just It was like, n nobody would call themselves posh that's not a thing wow um, they just wouldn't though <laughs> no like I, I remember speaking to someone recently and I gave them the I said too posh to posh and they had no idea what I was talking about that's oh, not really? a thing yeah that's not a thing at all um so yeah lifestyling the whole point of the the title of the book lifestyling is that you are styling the phase of life that you are in so it's not about finding your style and your personal style and it being that style for the rest of your lives it is you are styling your life right now and your life right now could be completely different than it was 10 years ago and it will be different again in 10 years so it's a constant evolution um but hopefully they are some simple steps as it says on the cover to um <laughs> finding your style and kind of you can reevaluate, go back and be like okay i'll follow these steps and now where am i at and i think it will hopefully be a, a useful guide for anyone mm -hmm. but it is definitely aimed at people who have already got to that stage where they're like mm, I wonder. But also in the book, I like the fact that you've you're not just doing it from your side; you're doing it from all different people because you've got yes. like, you've got collaborations and you've got people talking about different phases and what they had in their life and yeah, what happened. And so I've got six contributors in the book um, who are I think three bloggers and three non bloggers. I forget. Regardless, everybody's on Instagram, <laughs> so everyone's a blogger <laughs> these days. Um, but yeah, I've got three different uh, six different contributors at different phases of their life. And um, with and without children, with grown-up children, with very young children. One has literally just had a baby, which would be Liza. Congratulations, Liza. Um, and, yeah, I've got people giving their experiences because everyone is so different. And whether it be um, confidence after having a baby, because there is an element of motherhood in there, although it's not just for mums, uh, confidence about, you know, your body or whatever um, after having children or um, your beauty routine, what you think is essential, what your basics would be, all that stuff, everyone is so different. Mm. And at different ages as well, I think, 
that's a massive thing. Yeah. Like some some one person might say, I need a full face of makeup on all the time. One person might be like just a bit of mascara and lip gloss. Yeah. It's really interesting to me. And that was really valuable to have those different people's voices. Where are we? Da-da. So I feel like I need like a microphone or something. <laughs> so you've covered that one is your book specifically for mums okay oh. what section did you find most difficult to write and what was the most fun part to write if I could just refer to the book <laughs> are you going to read to us you should read like a oh, section should I read a passage <laughs> should I read a passage you know, I, I might do like um, a private link from this video so you can hear me reading the first chapter <laughs> that would be lols um I'm going to say it's probably something to do... There are personal sections. So, like, there's a, a chapter on relationships. So I've covered friendships, um, marriage and divorce, all kinds of stuff in there. I've also got... I'm looking, I'm looking. There's something in here um, with the kids. But I feel like it's not actually written in in the actual contents of the book. Maybe it's... <laughs> it's because I wrote the book in a really odd way I didn't write it in chapters I wrote it in like little mini sections and so for example when we talk about like relationships it will be like a sub section so like I've written a section about um Milo called what I've learned from Captain Hook because I think that we should all take a leaf out of children's books where they just will wear anything and not worry about what other people think. Mm-hmm. And that, that I, I enjoyed writing the stuff about the children, but I have also written a letter to Ella, which was quite... That was nice. That was... I think that was... Between that and the marriage and divorce sections, I'm going to say they were the hardest to write purely because they were personal. And um, I was concerned about not being able to take it back. Anything that I've written down, like in, in normal circumstances, I do a YouTube video or a rap blog post and I can delete it, I can amend it, and that's it. It's not out there anymore. And with this, once it was once it was done and published and people had it in their hands, I can't take that back anymore. And I think that's the hardest part. Mm. That's it's really, like there forever. Yeah, I mean there are plenty of parts. Like if if you talk about uh, if you're talking about how long it took me to write things, the whole section in the beginning about colour theory and body shape and the te- more technical stuff that I really wanted to put into an easy, digestible format in the first part of the book, that was the hardest because it took the most research because I knew stuff, but I wanted to make sure I was giving the right information. So that was probably the hardest when it comes to real hard work. Um, but hardest, like hardest to write, was definitely the stuff that, I thought, mm, should I share this? Should I not personal share this? Personal stuff, yeah. The more personal stuff, for yeah. sure, for sure. And actually, you just said about how long did it take. How many hours do you think you put into the book? I honestly don't know. I told people it took Literally about six months. Literally lost months. months. Yeah. <laughs> it, it took about six months, which doesn't really seem like a long time. But I was, um, I was writing it, again, in chunks here and there and around my regular job and my YouTube stuff and the kids. But the kids, in the last portion it was the six week holidays so I was literally working through the night um you survived on a lot of red yeah there were multiple <gasps> nights where I just didn't sleep I just worked all the way through the night and then I had the kids all day <laughs> the next day and I was like I'm going to die <laughs> um but part I mean part of it was writing and part of it was the the illustrations and stuff as well so I watched the entire of Desperate Housewives while I wrote this book Oh, right. I'm surprised you it. haven't, like, put a plot in there. Or oh, I think like... there was. Oh. I definitely wrote something about Desperate Housewives somewhere and um, Real Housewives in New York. Uh, no, but for sure I must have written about Desperate Housewives in there uh, because it was... Because Do you feel was... like this book has been, like, a lot of blood, sweat and tears? Like, has anything made you cry whilst um, writing the book? No, not whilst writing it, but when I've read it back. Like, the, the letter yeah. to Ella. There were things that had made me cry afterwards when I wrote them mm. well afterwards when I read them but at the time no 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 okay right next question um did you come up with the title or was it the published what the publisher wanted yes um this is another thing like that I'm gonna find it a bit strange to buy a book that's directed at mums not being one myself well I can vouch for the fact that it's not for mums so and I'm not just saying that because you know you're yeah. my friend and I'm like I have to say that it's, I don't have to say that I, no I don't I'm not Am I contractually obliged? Yeah, that? I definitely are. Yeah, <laughs> I get what people are saying, but I, I think the main thing is, and people have asked about what 
um, influence the publisher had and stuff. And um, and I don't think the title actually reflects it in any way. Lifestyling. Either. Lifestyling could mean anything. Yeah. I know, like, the subheading is simple steps for yeah. mums to find style and confidence, but the title doesn't say anything. But I understand why it's off-putting. And I think the thing yeah. is, I have written from the perspective of being a mum because I've never not been a mum because I had Ella when I was 19. And so... Uh, I have all that's that is just my perspective and I had what you know yes and I'd written certain sections and they said right this is our audience and from a marketing point of view it has to be marketed at someone so I I totally understand that it's off-putting for some people but there's very little in the book that you couldn't just like breeze past if you're not a mum and I think even if you are the sections I've written about I haven't really written necessarily about motherhood um there is a chapter called uh, something like what is a mother or like what what's a good mother um, but that could you know everyone's got a mother of some kind whoever it might be someone who's mothered you and um, I think they just they just wanted it to be aimed at someone and it's difficult to aim a book at everyone no exactly. and still get no, it to get out there did you come up with the title yes yes okay um Da, da, da. Oh, I've got one. Your book arrived on my porch today. So Thank excited you. and proud of you. It looks great. That's really cool. That's to a hear. nice comment. Um, okay. How much were you influenced or not influenced by other YouTubers or bloggers' books? This is a good question. Well. Because all YouTubers yeah. write books these days, don't they? Um, so, fun fact. Once upon a time, I was going to make a makeup palette. And um, it was going to be a a bit of a, like a play on the fact that bloggers always release books and part of it was because I wanted to release a book and there was no way in a million years anyone was going to ask me to write a book um, and so I had this idea and I was going to do a, an eyeshadow palette it was going to be called Dedicated and in it I had um, names of everyone that I knew and all this stuff but the whole thing was going to be I was going to make a video and I was going to say guys I've got a really exciting announcement and it was going to be like a parody of I've written a book, <laughs> yeah. um, and then it was going to be eyeshadows, um, which is kind of amusing to me now because I actually got to write the book and I didn't get to do the eyeshadow part. But um, <laughs> with that in mind, I always kind of have this stigma of YouTube YouTuber books, mm. and so when they asked me to do it, I was really excited. There was no way I wasn't going to do it because that's an amazing opportunity. That one, when this all goes away, I still have that. Um, but the the only thing. The only way it influenced me is the fact that the whole time I was writing it, I was thinking, I know what people are going to say. And I'm, I was thinking, people are going to think this is just a YouTuber book. I want, I, I would almost, like, they wanted me to write on the front of it. It does say, Michaela McDade, YouTube's Miss Budget Beauty. Right. And I was like, oh. Yeah, but that's part of the marketing. Of course. Part of the, marketing. the same as the reason that it says mum's on the title, on the, on the cover. It's part of marketing. And I understand that, but I don't want it to feel like a YouTuber book and I would like someone to pick it up and read it and not know I was on YouTube. Did you ever worry that people would think that it was ghost written like somebody had done it for you? Someone, several people in real life have asked me if I've written this book myself. Really? So that's obviously a thing even people that aren't you know well, these are like men mostly um which probably says a lot um but yeah people have asked that's the first question most people have asked have me. Have you written Did it? Did you write it yourself? It, why would I not write it myself? Well, because there's been things, haven't there, of people not writing their books. But I think that that, that news... that stigma. Yeah, that news must have become so mainstream mm. for people who are, like, not youtube people and don't watch YouTube videos yeah. to know that that's a thing. So they YouTube think that, have. yeah, yeah influ- but that's, influencers or celebrities... Like, celebrities go to write their books, don't yeah. they, and stuff, and yeah. people... Uh-huh. But I think the, the only thing that influenced me is the whole time I was writing it, I was thinking that, and I think that is why certain sections of it were harder to get through, because I kept thinking... This has to be good. Mm. Because if it's not, I mean, even if it is good, people are going to pick it apart. But if it's if it's really easy to pick apart, it's going it to be even worse. It is good. It's easy to read. It's easy to go through. Um, I, yeah, I like it. I like the style that you've written. But then I like the style that you write anyway. Well, thanks, Emma. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. So this was the thing where she said, did you come up with the title? And she meant, did I come up with the mum's title? Oh, with the mum title. Yeah, yeah. so you I just... addressed that. Yeah, I did, but I just... There was one last thing that I wanted to say on that was that they wanted mums. Mums? right up until the very last minute, it was mums. And it was... I had to concede. I had to give it up for that because it, it had to be um, in American bookshops and they wouldn't reference it as mum. 
if uh, as mom if it said mom it was the weirdest argument i've ever had mind you some people they people say mom in this country <gasps> in birmingham, it's birmingham in, yeah. in the midlands um no i was like that was going to kill me a little bit and right at the very last minute we changed the cover i didn't like the cover before we really hashed it out on that one there were several covers yes I've, i mean i've seen the process i'm going to put them up on screen <laughs> um, for the proper video now yeah there were lots of different covers um we went back and forth i didn't like any of the covers they came up with i just didn't i didn't understand how they i felt like you're not getting me at all um and then the stuff i was coming up with was a bit too busy and then right at the very last minute I came up with something completely different on free online software mm. and they just accepted it and they said, oh, by the way, it can be mums. It was like literally the best day of my life. <laughs> best day of my I life. like it. I think it's, hang on a sec. It's just fresh. It's fresh. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, I know how much time and effort and, you know, sleepless nights, you know, you know, you, you wouldn't text me for weeks. I mean, that was unrelated. But <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> because I just knew your head was buried in writing this book do you know and it, 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 it did take over your life for a, a while yes. but it's worth it for what you've got yeah I'm, I'm really proud i think the, the actual writing part the hardest part is that the the stuff i do on youtube anyway is very difficult to explain as a job and so when you are working around a family everybody has to respect that when i'm working i'm working but it doesn't look like work and so yeah. I already have that with like editing and writing blog posts and taking pictures. Stuff that doesn't seem like work. Mm. Um, and of course people know, but but they don't. You know, like if you were at an office job, people don't just come up to you and talk about like, you know, there's a certain level of everybody understands yeah. you're at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I'm working at home, I've always had that kind of difficult situation of being interrupted and I'm like right I'm gonna need an hour so I can really concentrate on what I'm doing and if I'm interrupted it just takes me longer. So did you take yourself away? Did you have to like come up here and be like I just have to? It would it was really hard. It would take me maybe an hour to get into the writing flow and then it would it, that's the part of the reason that I would work through the night because it was literally the only time I would get 100% total alone time. No one was going to interrupt me. Once I was on it I could continue did you ever like wake up in the night with ideas and like have to like write them down straight away um no i don't <laughs> think so no not an ideas person <laughs> like, <laughs> no no well i think most of the stuff that uh because i fleshed out the actual concept of the book initially we had done like uh one of the questions that i've had in the past is about uh like how how it came to be so they contacted me and then i had to pitch as far as i am aware they contacted multiple different people i thought it was a scam um, I remember you said that. I was 100% <laughs> thought it was a scam. They contacted multiple different people to see whether or not they would be interested in writing um, a style book of some kind. That was the vague, like, preface of the whole thing. Mm. And I happened to have already put together a whole load of, like, prep for a style series on my blog and YouTube channel. So when they contacted me, I was like, well, you know, it's not a massive thing. I've already done a lot of the work. I'll just do it. So I looked up how to like put together the package and all the stuff, what exactly what they would want. Um, and I had all of my ideas that I wanted. I put them on cards. I shuffled them up so that they were into like sections. It's kind of as the book is right now. Is that when you were laying them out on the thing? Yes. Mm. My most liked Instagram post of 2018. <laughs> so like if you see the, the chapters here, imagine that, that every single one of those was like a row on my floor and I had like all of the different things so like starting on a open on a budget like packing handbags it's like you brainstormed exactly yeah so I wrote down all of my individual ideas that I'd have for this series and um, I put them in columns of like this goes with this this goes with this this goes with this and then um I kind of fleshed out the table of contents and then that went over and they chose my pitch and then I started writing the book and I didn't get any money to the state I will um I mean I'll be sending you my invoice for of course, of course, for this, the questions. for this, yes. Um, and I will pay you in books. Because um, it's all I have, am I? Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think I'll make a tremendous amount of money from the book. The, the actual process itself was one I never thought I would get to have, so it's totally worth it. Um, but it's the achievement. Yeah, completely. It's the, you've written a book, you're an author. I'm an author, and an I'm author. going to become un, unbearably author-like. <laughs> I've get... decided... <laughs> 
you can see you on a chaise long. Oh, yes, with the leather, feather, bu- feather with boa. Leather like, elbow like, patches. Like Barbara Cartland. Mm. <laughs> oh, I was going a different way. I was going oh. for like an old, ye old English professor. Oh, okay. With a pipe. Oh. Um, okay, so I think we should probably go to Instagram and see. Yes. See what yeah. questions we've oh, had. Yours paused, then it came Mine back. Paused. Mine's paused again now. So let's see what questions we've got. So, Paul, okay. Uh, I have the book on pre order ready for my flight to NYC in six weeks. What was the oh. hardest part about writing the book, number one? Oh, so excited to going to New York. Almost as if I'm going myself. Oh. Um, hardest part about writing the book, the book is was the time. It really was just finding the time, the dedicated time where it was uninterrupted. How did Lee feel about it? Because obviously you were split. You know, you've got to juggle yes. everything. Well, he's always been really supportive of everything, but I think in this particular case, it did feel like, I don't want to say he didn't take it seriously, but you don't know how seriously to take something. Right. But then now, him seeing that, what was his reaction when he saw the book? Well, the first thing he said was, I can't believe I've lost the passport forms. <laughs> I, I caught. I, what? I FaceTimed him. That's I was like, really supportive. I'm so excited. Um, I told the DHL man that delivered things. Um, I'm giving you, I'm like, whoever is still on live on mine is getting like a full under chin shot. That's not cute. Um, so yeah, I <laughs> I called him at work, FaceTime, and I was like, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Look, it's, look what's just arrived. And that morning, he'd lost the passport forms. So bear in mind, we tried to get Milo's passport about 100 times and oh, it kept right. not working. So I get it. But I was like, you're not, you're not really giving me the level of enthusiasm that I want. So my, then my dad got home and I said, Dad, my books have arrived. And he went, I hope, you didn't, I hope they didn't make you pay for them. <laughs> I was like... You were so excited. <sighs> oh, Was Milo excited? Milo was the most excited. <laughs> I told Ella, she was like, yeah, but I wasn't really excited before. I was like, oh, great, okay. Um, Milo sat down on the sofa and he was like contents <laughs> like he was gonna read it it was so cute since then he's taken a copy and he's got it on his bedside table yeah you said so, that yeah nice. because he's worried that i'm gonna give him all away and he's not gonna have one which is really cute but yeah the for sure the hardest part was the um finding the time and it is the same as with youtube and with blogging and stuff it's difficult to get people to take it seriously as an actual thing that you're doing mm. that's not just like oh messing around yeah. And until it was a real actual book, I don't think anyone thought it was real. I didn't think it was real. You were really sort of... Yeah, I... What I'm looking for? Not opti- hesitant? Not optimistic, the other one. Pessimistic. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Pes- pessimistic about it. Yes. But now but, it's... But then part of it was, I kind of... Because you thought it was a scam. Yeah, for sure. I thought, this is never going to actually be a book. But then also, if it is a book, people are going to trash it. Like, I just... Because no. it's a YouTuber book... That was a that was a big thing, um, a big kind of struggle, if you will, of mine was the whole time I was writing it. I was thinking, this is never going to be. Like I just want it to be great, and it is great. I don't want it to be a YouTuber book, but people are going to read it as a YouTuber book, even if this is the best book in the world. People will not be able to see past the fact that a YouTuber You're wrote a YouTuber. this book. But however, you being a YouTuber has enabled you to write oh, a book. Oh, hundred percent. Without it, I win couldn't win. Have it's difficult. Win win. It's tricky, tricky spot. Um, oh, someone's at work. At work, got to go. Just been busted. <gasps> no, just been busted. Doing what? Oh, do you know what? I, I can think of a question. I can think of a question. Okay. So, where do we get this from? And how <laughs> much is it? <laughs> Come on, sell your book. Well, um, it, the price changes all the time. Right. It's like so it fluctuates. <laughs> <laughs> Price changes all the time. I don't know. I think it's something to do with co-buying, right? So I tried to explain this to someone the other day, and I don't know if it's not true, which is why I've not put it anywhere else. But I'll just it I'll would, keep it in shop. But it would seem constantly. It would seem that the more people buy the book, you know, if there's like a big surge, mm-hmm. if suddenly lots of people buy the book, Amazon put the price down, and it must oh. be because they know they're buying X amount. They're buying like they're getting a discount in bulk. I don't know. It has to be something like that. You know what? So yeah, suddenly it'll be like. Nine pounds something, and then it'll go back up to twelve something. Okay, um, but officially it is um, nineteen ninety five dollars. Right. Dollars. So you're looking about between nine and twelve, thirteen pounds. Yeah, for there the or thereabouts, depending on when you buy it. Mm-hmm. Um, Amazon, 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 Amazon. You can pretty much get it from anywhere. I've looked, and it's on many different websites. I don't know whether really? or not. What? Yeah. Not on Amazon. Yeah, it's in like Waterstones, Dewey Smiths, but not in store. I don't know whether or not it's actually going to be a physical book in store. 
the um, publisher that I work with does the majority of their marketing online. So, like, there's no big book tour. There's no massive, like, Just money push costs, behind costs, it. Yeah. yeah, it's all online. So, yeah, I have no idea whether or not I'll sort out some kind of meet-up or, like, that would be launch. Cool. It would be cool, but I think it's on me, and I'm not sure how to do that. This is basically like a step up from Would you be interested? There's another question. Would uh-huh. you be interested in a little meet up with, yeah. with the books? And you can sign the books, talk about the books. <laughs> sing, right, please do. Please. Sing, 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 sing. Um, <laughs> yeah, totally, yeah. Sign the books. <laughs> well, that would be in tune. Um, yeah, we could maybe do something like that. I mean, geez, whoever's still watching this video at this point, <laughs> oh, sh- God, you yeah. might actually oh. come to the meet up. So I might do something like that, but there's no official anything going on it is just like the 28th of february um it's live 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 released live. launched live in the world it is but it's already out there in america and, and canada and apparently someone in switzerland or something got it the other day wow yeah mm. crazy 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 so yeah available to pre-order officially out on the 28th i think it might be the 28th by the time you see this so buy it now that'd be great um <laughs> also Ooh. Also, um, if you do purchase it, I would massively appreciate a review on Amazon because apparently that's a big thing as well. Mm. Bit of a noob at this, so I don't really know, but apparently, yeah. Get five stars. Get get five stars. stars. Oh, you spent too much time up north, Emma. Oh, <laughs> e by gum. Oh. Yes. Tin, tin, five stars. Tin, tin, tin. Tin, tin, tin. That's Emma. what you've taught me. Tin, tin, tin. But tin, tin, tin. Tin, tin, tin. 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 Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> for, for Thanks this, for letting me be in the video. For this um, little q and A, I thought I wanted to do a QA and a before Christmas and we started filming this and I was just like, it's too much pressure. Yeah, you were, really were I couldn't do it. it. I, I, yeah. Because I just felt... You were feeling really stressed about it. And, yeah. yeah. I felt like I couldn't... I didn't really know what the book was. I think it's very different now because you've got it in your hands. Look, smell. <sighs> it's a book. It is different. And I still, I, I still am finding it really difficult to describe exactly what the book is. Um, it's not just style. It's all kinds of things. It's style and confidence. And it is about your time right now. And even with relationships and things like that, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about clothing or... Um, your personal Mm -hmm. well-being things change constantly and you need to be yeah in life yeah you need to be kind of evolving with that and re-evaluating how you're feeling about different things and it is yeah there's a a big focus on style yeah but um no i talk about all kinds of things and like and also i really like the packing section let me let me just show you because i did do these and these take took me so so very long the drawings yeah. yeah let's just make it like all the illustrations in this book you have done I mean, on an iPad, but but yes. still. Um, so I'm trying to find the one. So these, I lo- I used. This reminds me so much. Do you remember the little cutout dolls, the paper dolls that you used to get, oh, um, yeah. where you would like make all the different things? I used to do stuff like this all the time. So this is like a capsule wardrobe, and I go over different ways that you can adopt a capsule wardrobe. You know, it doesn't have to be super super difficult. You don't have to have really really minimal stuff you can try capsule dressing when you're packing you can try it for a season like i'll put away all my summer stuff and then effectively yeah, that. that is a capsule stuff of summer stuff yeah. yeah so you'll have you don't have to have only like 10 items of clothing to have a capsule wardrobe it just makes dressing easier and then the whole part in the beginning where i talk about colors and finding your colors and all of that it just makes everything so much easier when you're dressing if you have a color palette that you work to most things go together everything works on you even if you've got something that you love like we've talked about before, I gave you as an example actually in the book, um, where depending on what your hair colour is, mm. depends on what colour you can wear and yeah. works really well. Like when you're super, super blonde, a bright blue works really well. Yeah. But when you were brunette, didn't it didn't work as well. work, no. It just didn't. And I think that that, it that made yellow, dull. yeah, I would say that like mustard yellow would work better when you have dark hair yes. than when you've got super blonde hair. Yeah. And it, you do have to kind of reevaluate because you think, oh, this is my favourite dress. And then suddenly one day you put it on and it's just something that's just not quite right. It's probably the colour. Mm. Even if it's just slightly the wrong colour for you, there's probably things in your wardrobe that you love but you never wear and there's a reason for that. Yeah. So um, there's the whole section in the front that took the longest time was basically that. The trying to 
realise that it's actually not that difficult. You don't have to have like Instagram model style. You just have to have some really basic ideas of what suits you. And once you figure out, colours is the biggest thing. If you do nothing else, figure out what your colours are. Mm. Um, Because even if you wear just like black all the time, but you know what colours like make you light up, buy some scarves, buy some coats, buy some accessories in that colour. For me, I'm always in black. And then I accessorise with a shirt or something. Yeah. And then she's matchy, matchy. Look at this. (laughs) It's matching. (laughs) Yeah. I I didn't do it on purpose. I swear I didn't. I didn't. Oh, okay. oh, I didn't. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just like this shirt, this new shirt I got. Yeah, I, that's. I, I like I say, find it really difficult to kind of succinctly describe what the book is, but a lot of it is, I think, going to be really, really helpful for a lot of people because that's got nothing to do with whether or not you're a mom. No. Um, it is just that I think a lot of people, when they do have children, suddenly in that moment, they're like, oh, what am I? Where, who am I being anymore? Like lost. People yeah, feel lost. Just that is a, that is a difficult time. But you're still you. Yes, completely. And so that is definitely a focus. But a lot of it would still be completely relevant to people that aren't mums, because in this day and age, everyone goes through that period of like anxious, feeling lost, and not really knowing who they are, and wanting to rediscover themselves or whatever. Um, so it's ongoing. Yeah, it is. It's an evolution. That's what I'm saying. It is an evolution on that. Po- uh, yeah, the book is an evolution. <laughs> and on that bombshell, <laughs> it's an evolution. I think we'll end it. Yes. Um, so yeah, thanks again to Emma for joining me because I think that's another thing it, I found it difficult to do by myself because I think it needs to be a conversation. Mm. There are certain things that it's easier to talk to about, talk to Absolutely. someone about than yeah. it is to talk to a camera about. And an audience. And an audience, of course. Um, and yeah, I hope this has answered some questions. I'm sure there will be more. I'll probably make more videos in the future once I've had some Amazon reviews where I'm like, that's what the book is. That's <laughs> what it is. I think once people start to read it, because I've had some already that are so exciting, um, but once people start to read it and give me some feedback and then obviously share that with other people, I'm like, ah, oh, I feel like that's when it'll all come together and I'll go, yes, this is exactly what it is this thing that you've taken from it, that is the perfect way of describing it. So I'll probably talk about this for the rest of my life. Um, and why not? And why not? And why not? Uh, it's an yeah. achievement. It's something to be proud of. Thanks. Well done. Thanks. I'm proud. Thanks. I'm proud. Oh, good. Um, so if you just all, if, if I could just get a million of you to buy this book. <laughs> yeah, because she's taking me on holiday. It'll be great. It'll be great. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I would take ten. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us um, the book is available now and I will see you guys next time check out Emma's channel leave it here yeah subscribe she won't, she won't leave it there I will I totally will I'm really good at this now um, but it might be linked below and I will see you guys next time bye every time I'm going out the same things keep happening